Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, CSS architecture, um, a robust, flexible, and scalable CSS for enterprise projects. Um, before I begin, um, I want to ask how many of you guys um, consider themselves architects or CSS architects? In a show of hands. Someone, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, if you consider yourself architect. Okay, I appreciate your honesty. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start with uh, defining the word. What's the word architecture, first of all? And I found this definition online. Uh, architecture is a systematic arrangement of components. Um, I don't know who wrote that, so it's an unknown, but I like the definition. Um, before I start my talk, I wanna. Um, give credit to these guys, these three guys, uh, Harry Roberts. Um, he's the guy who executed this, um, uh, like, like these methodologies and, and, and uh, documents that has been in the, uh, online for, for quite a while. Uh, he's also the author of uh, CSS Wizardry, if you guys are aware of that. Um, Jonathan Snook, uh, I'll speak about him later. He introduced uh, Smacks the book for scalable uh, CSS. I'll talk about that uh, later on in my slide. And uh, Nicole Sullivan, uh, who introduced the concept of object-oriented CSS. <coughs> so I'm uh, going to start with um, CSS architects do mistakes, and all of us feel guilty about it. Um, we encounter we encounter a lot of insufficient documentations, um, lack of structure, uh, project knowledge, poor handoffs, and uh, new styles at the bottom of the global style sheet. We all do that, yeah. How many of you doesn't do that? <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the smack. I think it came out back in two thousand twelve. It's pronounced Smacks, uh, S-M-A-C-S-S. -S. Uh, Jonathan Snook is the one who introduced the concept of structuring CSS into various categories. Um, and these categories later on uh, called CSS layers. We'll talk about that uh, later. Understanding the purpose of CSS layers um, adds a lot of meaning to, your, to the style that you write. Uh, we start with the default layers. I'm going to just um, jump in right into it. Uh, the default right layers are um, broken into uh, generic elements, objects, uh, components, utilities, tools, settings, and JavaScript hooks. I'll go briefly into each of these categories. Um, and yeah, we'll take questions later. Um, so we'll break it down. Uh, starting with generic. Uh, generic is, in fact, the first layer that generates CSS. Uh, some of these um, okay some of these files uh, the generic can be considered as a box sizing uh, the normalized CSS um, all the resets and all the sheds uh, shared styles uh, will fall under the generic category an example of that um, declaring the HTML box sizing uh, border box this is considered uh, generic uh, moving on to elements, uh, elements uh, are actually refining the default HTML um, element styles. Uh, some of the elements we know are headings, elements, headings, images, page, and tables. An example of that, uh, an image is an element uh, in the DOM, and you can declare um, these values of maximum width, 100%, and vertical align middle. This is considered an element. Um, next are objects, and objects are pretty much uh, cosmetic free design patterns, uh, such as the media object. Uh, the media object was introduced um, with the object-oriented CSS back in 2012. Uh, any, of, any of you know what the media object is? Yeah, okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll show you an example later. But objects can be considered as a block, uh, box, layout, the media, object, and a wrapper. An example of that, this is what, what we call a media. It's a very standard um, object we use in, uh, you will see it in most of the blocks online these days. 
so the way we declare it is uh, all refer to an object dash media and the media if you're using SAS or if you're familiar with pre-processing CSS uh, we use the include mixin uh, clear fix and we display block later on uh, later on we will we will declare the elements within this object the elements here we can see is an image um, an image and a body in this example we make it uh, simple uh, so we have an image uh, we declare the float left margin right and the image the image as a display block and the uh, all media body <coughs> the all media body has a display block overflow hidden and so on um, yeah moving on to components um, components are actually project specific uh, UI components that contains objects and elements this is where all your work will be uh, you don't have to when, when you are structuring all your uh, CSS or when you are building your uh, CSS architecture you only need to add uh, new CSS components everything else needs to be set and there for you you don't have to touch it all the work will happens in the components. Um, components can, uh, an example of these components can be uh, bullets, buttons, uh, fonts, and cards. A button can be a component. An example of that is uh, we can declare it as a C dash component and a button, and then we add uh, these values. <coughs> Um, if you want to declare um, a modifier button to the to the main button, we call it a C button uh, primary, um, and then we add a background if there's any background, and then um, we attach it to a brand color uh, brand color function, and uh, hover and focus and so on. Um, next are uh, is you. Utilities, uh, helper classes that has the ability to override CSS. Um, these classes can be set by you and you can uh, set whatever helper classes that you need to use in your project. You don't have to add any uh, helpers that you don't want to use in this project. And uh, these can also be adjusted according to the project that you're working on. Yeah. So utilities, we have a clear fix hitting CDA, the standard uh, files that you need to create, <coughs> uh, he headings, height, spacing, width, and so on. Uh, the utility class fix can include just a uh, mixing of uh, include clear fix and the utility hidden or invincible uh, will include um, an invincible uh, mixing. Utilities classes can do put spaces uh, put spacing values into elements we can generate a set of classes like these for example and these values will be set by you um, you can only set whatever works to, to that specific project and and these values can be taken from one file so you, you, you set all your um, values in one file and then um, everything will be captured from there um, the same the same applies to uh, grids, grid systems, uh, and the naming can be pretty much whatever works to you. Uh, either can be uh, a fraction-like format or a spoken word format, like um, a utility four of sixteen, which is uh, four um, out of sixteen grid, or a u dash seven uh, four slash twelve. Um, next will be tools. Uh, predefined mixins and functions uh, this works only with preprocessors so uh, if you're not familiar you don't need that uh, to be there so we include a functions mixins and responsive if we are doing a responsive websites and the declaring the width uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, mixins uh, I use all the time is the, the mixin vendor And uh, what it does is um, 
I will only use need to use one line and then I'll add all the prefixes that I need uh, to be attached uh, to be generated in my CSS file. Uh, question on that. Hmm. Why would you do that and not just use auto Um This is just an old practice that I okay. use. Yeah. An example of that would be the include vendor. I think I think I I like the simplicity that I just need to include just one line. Well, if you use the prefix, you mm. use yeah. Because you don't have to do anything. You just so, it. Sometimes it depends on the project itself okay. whether we I want to support older um, my browsers. Yeah, or but you just change your auto prefix to config and that will. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it's config rather than code. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all done in the configuration. Yeah. And yeah, that that's how. Um, you use them eventually. Uh, settings is where where you 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 pretty much set all all these uh, values and and um, yeah all, all these values that will be read by all these files. So in the config we w in the in the settings we have a config core global and responsive. The global will be if you, if you are working on a big project and it has to be localized to different markets. Uh, the core will be the market. So if you have uh, if you are launching your product to um, Hong Kong market and the Hong Kong market has a different uh, color schema, um, then you only need to add one file of uh, setting core or, or settings Hong Kong and then you just change all the values one shot and that's it. Everything else will be uh, rendered. Um, these settings, uh, an example of these will be uh, setting the global font, uh, radius and transitions. Um, the brand color, secondary color, or the text color, and so on. Uh, JavaScript hooks are is something. It, it's a good practice that I use. It doesn't have to do anything with CSS, but um, I thought I will uh, probably mention it because uh, it's a good practice to add um, a, a, add a JS dash to the classes that you don't need to, or or you want to tell your developers that don't style these. With, with this class because it will be used by JavaScript. Uh, so you don't need to add any CSS to it. It's just a good practice um, and I feel like it's uh, worth mentioning. An example of that, uh, a JS model, white, black, uh, a button blinking and uh, form validation. <coughs> and uh, I forgot to mention that uh, CSS architecture is not really a framework, uh, but I would like to call it a style guide. Um, because a framework is pretty much there's a lot of frameworks in the market and they all have um, a predefined styles that that they are there and you just use and you as a, a CSS architect you just use them or you override them eventually which creates a lot of uh, unneeded codes so this uh, by setting up a good architecture or a good style guide at the very beginning of the project uh, will save you a lot of time and a lot of uh, effort to maintain your code. Uh, so, what are the benefits if we follow this? Um, if, we, if we follow this um, architecture, we will have clearly un a more understandable uh, uh, structure. Um, we can scale at ease, uh, long-term maintainability, uh, smoother project handoffs, and easier collaborations. Um, existing style guides uh, in the market now are ITCSS. Uh, this one is created by Harry Roberts. Um, he's still trying to uh, uh, spread the awareness about this structure. Um, he uses the same um, um, the same layers as I mentioned earlier: settings, tools, generic elements, objects, uh, components, and trumps. Trumps is a new layer. Uh, meant for adding new functionality to your project. Um, there is no source code. Surprisingly, there is no source code in GitHub for this. But he he has a, a long blog post about explaining how settings tools and all these layers work and how you can use them in your project. Next one is uh, Inuit CSS, which you, you can find it on GitHub. Uh, and I personally uh, use it. It has it uses the similar, again, it's by Harry Roberts, and it uses the same uh, layers that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll probably show you an example later of how the folder is um, structured properly. And uh, 
I, I can't pronounce this, but it's Aluyet dot CSS. Uh, this guy, he, he took the, the, the idea from Inuit CSS from Hari, and then he just uh, reused reuse it, and then he add his own uh, naming convention to it. It's pretty much similar. It's using the same uh, methodology, which is uh, good practice. Uh, before I go to useful reads, uh, I'll probably show you how the uh, I, I I downloaded Inuit CSS before I came here, and maybe I'll show you how the folder structure works. So Inuit CSS. Uh, <coughs> Now I think it's not just maintained by Harry. Uh, a lot of guys already realize how important it is and how big it can go. Uh, so I think there are about five guys now uh, maintaining the, the project. Um, again, this is where, maybe I'll just use Atom. <coughs> All right. All right, so uh, in Inuit itself, uh, there's no documentation in the GitHub page, but you'll find a lot of documentation within these files themselves. Um, Hari put a lot of effort to document within the file. So when you open the file, you understand exactly what is this file uh, is going to be used for and where you can <coughs> change the values and when you, where you can't. Uh, these are, again, the generic, the resets, and so on. Uh, the most interesting one would be the uh, configs, where you set all um, all these uh, values. So, yeah, you just you just need to use them once here, and it will be used across all your site. The components uh, you might find it empty because the components are the components you use for your own project. So you don't have to uh, get components from elsewhere you you it really depends on the project that you work on um, and what components you really need on your website so all these components will be broken down into uh, different uh, files again uh, I, I use Inuit in uh, one of my project before um, and I find it really easy to scale up to different markets uh, all of us we every time we start a new project uh, a lot of the clients, if you work with clients directly, a lot of the clients will tell you, oh, we will start, we will just start first, right? We'll just start, launch the product in Singapore or Malaysia, and then we'll see how it goes. But you really don't know what's the, what, what's the future plan is. The product will work, will kick off uh, nicely, uh, it will kick off, and then you need to scale up. And if you are not using a solid uh, architecture, you will, you will have a lot of... Um, difficult time and then you will always have to go through the revamps which we are all aware of we revamp 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 and it's 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 just a loop and endless loop so by what, what I what I like about setting up this uh, uh, strong structure is you don't you can scale uh, very easily you can if you have to go to a different market let it be and then you just um, you already have these uh, uh, fundamental set and you you just need to pretty much work on these uh, components um, yeah I think that should be it uh, you can check it out in github the Inuit CSS and then you'll find more details about it um, some useful reads uh, I encourage you to um, go and read it. Um, CSS guidelines by Harry Roberts. Uh, it's it's a simple guidelines of how to use how to write clean CSS codes in your projects uh, and how to keep it um, very um, very clean so you can hand it over to newcomers who come in and join the project who have no clue how to uh, work on certain um, uh, certain files and it reduces a lot of uh, these moments where you just go into the CSS file, and then you just add lines at the very bottom of the file, which is a very bad practice. Uh, second is uh, idiomatic CSS by Nicholas uh, Gallico. Uh, it's a GitHub page. Uh, I'll share the slides maybe later. And yeah, that's about it. My name is Gis.
and thank you for listening. Questions? Hmm. Who wants chocolate? Chris will throw chocolate at you if you've got questions. No, I'll, I'll hurt people if I throw chocolate. <laughs> Why are you so shy? Don't be shy, Lee. Oh, thank you. See, look, he's happy, he's got chocolate. <laughs> you too can be happy. Okay. Oh, anyway, this is my CSS mascot. It is a unicorn kitten, or uni kitty. And he's very angry because everybody simply uses important all the time. So every time I want to use important, you think of my angry uni kitty and stop it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, next talk is also very cool. Next talk is a project by Aisha about, but it's very cool, so I'm not going to spoil it.